What is good, everybody? It is your boy, Champagne Chico, and we are here with another mock draft, but this one is going to be three rounds. I put it off from yesterday just because I wanted it to be on draft day. Four rounds can be when day two comes, and it's just kind of getting ready for the next day is what you can see it as but a three round mock draft for all the teams and this is going to include trades this is going to include any possibility of anything happening any rumors that i've heard recently like the falcons possibly trading back because they're convinced on Bijan, but want to get him at the value that he's at and still get some draft capital or players from it even though tyree wilson seems to be the big player that is supposed to be going there now before we get into the draft though i do have to ask you to go down there and like and subscribe for me i love making these mock drafts i'm planning to make this a normal thing on the channel and when you subscribe you're gonna see it every time that it comes out on mondays for the for the year this week is special because it is draft week so we're gonna go ahead and start the draft the perennial number one pick We've gone over this the last two videos. Bryce Young, everything you want out of a quarterback, the only thing is his size, but you can look past it because he's a leader. He has all the skills that you need, and he can literally be consistent. Like he, His floor is high. His floor is so high for a QB. He literally only needs to get some muscle so he can take the hits in the pocket, but that's about it. Bryce Young out of Alabama spoken very highly of by almost everybody that knows of him or no, or has seen him play at all the texans are now here and it keeps becoming more and more realistic that will anderson is going to be going to houston i can't imagine any other situation now because cj stroud just doesn't seem to convince people enough and i really don't think will Levis is going to be their pick at number two i'm sure that they're going to be more competitive in terms of the number 12 overall pick if will levis falls there i'm sure they'll take him but i i really really don't think that they go with cj stroud or will levis or even anthony richardson at the number two overall pick getting a phenomenal phenomenal player in will anderson at the second overall pick is something that you probably want out of the number two overall pick getting the future of your defense in a way the cardinals have been very desperate to trade the number three overall pick but nobody is matching the price that they want right now i'm sure it's two first meaning this first and next year's first and it doesn't seem like people are too convinced because they probably want to see how the draft goes if it goes bryce young cj stroud which is highly probably unlikely then maybe the cardinals are able to move on from it but right now before the draft it doesn't seem like they're moving from there and it has gone from Tyree Wilson, it's gone from Tyree Wilson to not even Jackson Smith and Jigba, just a lot of defensive players, even Devin Witherspoon has been talked about for the Cardinals to be taken there, but they need offensive line, their offensive line is horrible, and they might just make Kyler happy by fulfilling his request of getting Paris Johnson Jr., and getting a big tackle in Paris Johnson Jr. It could happen whether or not they trade back or they would have to get Peter Skaronsky if they trade back and the Bears end up taking Paris Johnson. But I think Paris Johnson has a big chance of getting taken at the number three overall pick. And then that really would start a ripple effect. He is a massive, massive tackle and you only use him at tackle. He can't be a guard. He just has all the traits to be a tackle. And yeah, yeah, we, we've talked about him plenty before. Paris Johnson Jr. going to the Cardinals, fulfilling Kyler Murray's request. And CJ Stroud is the man that I probably see going to the Colts. As much as Frank Reich is not on the team anymore, he is now on the Panthers who took Bryce Young. The Colts need a quarterback. I mean, I could see Anthony Richardson. I could definitely see Anthony Richardson, but that's also a big risk. It just depends on how convinced they are, and I don't think a lot of teams are super convinced. I think it's a big smoke screen that they're trying to say, oh, Anthony Richardson could be QB1 in the draft. I really don't think that's going to happen unless they genuinely think that they can develop him. Uh, I just don't. I think they would go with CJ Stroud a uh, reliable QB instead of Will Levis and Anthony Richardson possibly not even being that reliable. 
CJ Stroud going to the Indianapolis Colts. Great, great quarterback out of Ohio State. It just depends on he if he can translate it to the NFL. He had a lot of great weapons. I mean, Michael Pittman Jr. is on the Colts, and so is Jonathan Taylor. Um, they have Alec Pierce on the team, too. They could go wide receiver later in the draft to help him out, but I don't see them going wide receiver in this draft at all. Jalen Carter is the man that I see going to the Seahawks no matter what I said in the last video. I just don't see any other situation. The only other situation that I see is Anthony Richardson going to the Seahawks. That's really about it, but I think they're going to be going with Jalen Carter. I'm not super convinced about Anthony Richardson. Yeah, Jalen Carter, an insane defensive tackle, has his legal troubles like I've said before, but he can get past that. He can definitely get past that with the leadership that they have on that team. Now having Bobby Wagner back on the team, I can imagine that. Pete Corral is going to want to add more fire firepower to his defense because it's getting older. They're getting older over there. And now the Lions are on the clock. And the more that the days have gone by, it seems like the Lions are not going to be taking Christian Gonzalez like I assume they will because he just seems like more of a safe cornerback. And in terms of size, in terms of consistency over the years. But Devin Witherspoon seems like the CB1 in this draft. And with Devin Witherspoon going to the Lions now, I just think Christian Gonzalez is still going to be better than him in terms of cornerbacks. Hopefully, they're both very good, and they're both very convincing in terms of that. But that leaves the Raiders to pick between possibly Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, and Christian Gonzalez. And I think they're going to go cornerback. Is I've said it in the last two that they'll probably go with Will Levis, but Will Levis seems to be jumping up and down in terms of where he's going to go. And you could see this fall in Will Levis that teams are not convinced, that teams don't really believe that he's going to be that type of man. It's almost like the Lamar Jackson situation and how he was so highly thought of at some points, but so gone against at some points. And then he ended up being the last pick in the first round. It's a tough pick for that, but I think that for the Raiders, they're going to be taking Christian Gonzalez. Nate Hobbs is really their only cornerback right now, and they really need they really need cornerback. They did not make any signings for that in the offseason. They have Jimmy Garoppolo is a safe, safe option for right now, especially having Devontae Adams at wide receiver, and he's still playing well at the age that he's at. I think you stick with Jimmy Garoppolo for the season. Hope that you find a good QB in the next draft. Maybe a QB comes out of nowhere but ends up being maybe a top 10 pick, and that's probably what they have. If they're not going to be that good. But now the Falcons are on the clock. A team that is heavily rumored to take Bijan. No matter what the situation is. It seems like Tyree Wilson is falling down the board. In terms of just being a top pick. I could see Bijan. But I don't know if they're sticking at this pick. I mean I could see them dra trading down to maybe the Vikings. And then the Vikings take the QB that they want. I could definitely see that now that I think about it. Yeah I think in this situation I'm going to be trading down. I think it's going to be with the Vikings. I think the Vikings could see a situation that they try to get their QB of the future because Kirk Cousins is only getting older and only getting worse. And they could sit through a possible... I would probably say this is a trade. I would probably say this is a trade. I, I won't get into too much specifics with it. I know this is the three-round one. It'll probably be a first, second, and a first this year. I'll just do it. I'll just do it anyways. I think the Falcons want to trade down. They look at who is below them. And the perfect, the perfect situation is to be above this NFC East division that really needs the running back position in terms of like a perennial all-star or all-pro. Yeah, I can see the Falcons trading out of this. They seem to like Bijan a lot. And a lot more than Tyree Wilson right now. I don't know how far Tyree Wilson's falling. But we are going to have to see in this draft. Yeah, so we're going to do this trade for the Vikings to get them the number 8 pick. As they see that there's still two QBs on the board. And they can leap over the Titans and the Texans who could be looking for a QB here. That might cause a big stir up. You could see the Bears trade out of the number 9 pick for the Texans number 12 pick. But we're going to go ahead and force this trade. Now the Vikings are on the clock at number eight. 
and they're probably going to be taking a QB here, as I've already said, but I think it's going to be Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson seems like a very high upside QB. If you get that type of QB alongside Justin Jefferson, I'm sure he'll be able to develop with Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson, KJ Osborne, possibly a new running back. I mean, I know that some Vikings fans want Bijan to go to the Vikings, but I just don't see it. I can't see it right now in terms of the Dalvin Cook situation. He could be traded on draft day. That probably could have been part of this trade, but I don't know what the Falcons would necessarily trade for Dalvin Cook. Anthony Richardson going to the Vikings, a bit different than my past mock drafts, but it could happen. It could definitely happen. And now you look at the Bears who want Peter Skaronsky you don't really see much except for the Eagles. The Eagles could snatch up Peter Peter Skaronsky here. Yeah, I'm going to have the Bears taking Peter Skaronsky right now, but that's going to set up a situation. Peter Skaronsky, again, very, very good tackle. Probably going to be somebody that you move to guard, but for the Bears right now, they just need a tackle. He's very good at blocking. He, has, he just has short arms. He just has very short arms for a tackle. That's why Paris Johnson was the first offensive tackle off the board, but you can't deny Peter Skronsky's talent. Out of Northwestern, going to the Bears. Now, the Eagles are here, but I could see I could see a situation that the Texans try to leapfrog the Titans, and the only way that I could possibly think that that would happen, that the Texans would be, able, would, would be willing to give up something, I mean, the 73 overall pick is the third round. A first and a third to move up two spots. I mean, that's not a horribly unrealistic trade. I wouldn't imagine that the Eagles would want an extreme amount of picks for the 10th overall pick. And it makes them a little bit comfortable with the pick that they're probably going to go with. So I'm going to have the Houston Texans trading up. I know I've already done a few trades. No, I've only done the Vikings one right now. Only done the Vikings one, but... I like this trade for the Texans. I like this trade for the Eagles just because Peter Skronsky and Paris Johnson are a little longer on the board. So, yeah. Yeah, we're going to give this to the Texans. And the Texans do take that trade. Will Levis is here. And Will Levis is who they are going to take. I know Jackson Smith and Jigba seems like the for sure in terms of the Texans. But they need a QB. They really need a QB. And unless they do a situation of trading for a QB, I, I just can't imagine that they're going to be paying a QB 150 mil plus while they could get a rookie QB. And if he doesn't perform well, then they continue the rebuild. It, it, that's just how it is. The Texans are now on the board. A difficult spot for them now because there's really nobody that they wanted on the team now. As the Titans did just get leapfrogged, over by the Texans probably unexpectedly it, it could be several different things they could go with offensive line but then you have the wide receiver one in Jackson Smith and Jigba in my opinion and you could put them alongside Traylon Burks worry about quarterback in the next draft you still have Ryan Tannehill yes he's 35 not the greatest option Malik Willis you still haven't really given a full chance to yet they're trying to say that he's just not what they want Trey Lance could be on the market. I think if the Titans are here and they just saw the Texans take Will Levis at the 10th overall pick above them, I think they take Jackson Smith and Jigba. I, I can't imagine that they go with offensive line at the 11 overall. So Jackson Smith and Jigba going to Tennessee. And the Eagles are now seeing a situation that they're able to get some draft picks out of trading out of the 10th pick. I don't think they draft Bijan this early. They saw how the Falcons traded away their top pick that they're going to take Bijan at and it probably makes them hesitate a bit and they could also just go with Jameer Gibbs regardless like there it's not like a extreme necessity to go with Bijan here also because they need to get their defense of the future and I think they once again go with a high upside player by the name of Nolan Smith just keeps going up the ranks but deservingly so a great edge i mean he's a bit undersized for sure 
I, you just can't get much better than Nolan Smith in this draft with how much of a likely ability that he has in terms of being able to play behind the leadership of the Eagles defense and him being able to develop in that Philadelphia scheme. I think he'll be great. I think he'll be great for the Eagles. It was either Nolan Smith or Lucas Van Ness. Lucas Van Ness is just very powerful, a very powerful edge, but I think Nolan Smith goes above him here. To the Philadelphia Eagles, the Green Bay Packers see that Nolan Smith just went to the Eagles. So that kind of makes them a little hesitant now because Lucas Van Ness is really the best edge on the board now. I mean, Miles Murphy is here. Tyree Wilson is still here. It's a tough decision. It's a tough decision for them. And as much as they probably want to take a tight end at this position, I don't I think they see how deep the tight end class is here and they have the second round pick right here. Or two second round picks now. And I think they go with an edge and they see that Tyree Wilson has already fallen this far. Could have probably went to Philadelphia. It it can go either way. Nolan Smith, I just think is a great prospect Tyree Wilson's just a freak in terms of his size maybe if I had to redo that I would probably take Tyree Wilson at the Philadelphia Eagles position but now that we're here we just have to go with how it's fallen and Tyree Wilson goes to the Packers I'm sure Packers fans would love that I've seen a lot about Tyree Wilson going to the Bears if he falls there I don't know I think they really need offensive line offensive tackles they have white hair at guard, so that's not too much of a concern right now. I don't know. I, I really can't see that he goes to the Bears if Peter Skoronsky's there, one of the best tackles in the draft class. The Patriots now see that Tyree Wilson just got taken and Nolan Smith just got taken, so they could get a little antsy, but I think they go tackle. I think they go tackle as much as Miles Murphy and Lucas Van Ness is still on the board think they drop a bit more and they take somebody like Broderick Jones here. Broderick Jones could be great for them. Broderick Jones, probably the probably the better tackle on the board with Anton Harrison and Darnell Wright. I think they go with him. Broderick Jones going to New England. A great pass blocking tackle. Good size. Very good size. Probably could have been better coming into college, but I think he'll be great in the league. Now the Jets are here looking for tackle and linebacker. And this is where you start to see a lot of tackles go off the board. I'm going to have Darnell Wright going to the Jets. They see that Broderick Jones is off the board. They see Peter Skoronsky's off the board and Paris Johnson going at number three. If they don't take one now, then they probably lose a chance to really defend for Aaron Rodgers, who is only getting older and you want to keep him long term. And that means avoiding him getting hit as much as possible. You're going to have Mekhi Becton. You're going to have Darnell Wright. I think that you go with the safe option here. Donald White, big man, very big man. It could be between Antoine or Darnell, but I'm going to go with Darnell Wright. Jumping off, up the ranks. Washington Commanders. Don't know why I said Redskins in the last mock draft, but the Washington Commanders, QB, guard, center, linebacker. And this is where I have some more cornerbacks going off the board. I still have Deontay Banks going to, if he falls this far, I could definitely see it. I, I think that's my only guaranteed pick of the draft that I have Deontay Banks going to the commanders. I think they're done with the undersized cornerbacks. And Deontay Banks is a fantastic size for what they need. So out of Maryland, Deontay Banks, 6'1". The cornerback that they need right now, it's a little iffy in that defensive room right now. But the Steelers see that they just took him, and these two picks are really the only ones that are going to be for sure going to stay the same for me. Deontay Banks and Joey Porter going back to back. I can't see Steelers going anywhere else but cornerback in the first round because that's exactly what they need. Yeah, Joey Porter going to Pittsburgh. A great pressed cornerback for the Steelers. I, I do I do think that this is what's going to happen for the Steelers right here. So Steelers go with a cornerback in the first round at the 17th overall pick. The Detroit Lions at their second pick of the draft, wide receiver, tight end, defensive interior. I had Kalijah Kansi going to the Lions in the first one, and I think that's what I'm going to have him going with in this one as well. Tight end, I, I think they wait on that too. Wide receiver is not really much of an option. I mean, Quentin Johnson is still here. No, I, I'm going to have Kalijah Kansi going to the Lions. They're going to go double defense in the first round, but... 
defense wins championships, and they almost made it to the playoffs last year. Kalijah Kansi, his size is not the most uh, sought after, but he has amazing physicals, and I think that they could really use him well next to Aiden Richards. Aiden Hutchinson, as much as I had Brian Branch going to them at the 19th pick before, they need offensive line. They just stepped away from Donovan Smith at tackle, who was their long-term tackle for a while. Antoine Harrison can really fill that in, and they have nobody to be on the opposite side of Tristan Wharfs. I think Antoine Harrison is going to be that. Yeah, 6'4 can be a swing tackle if Tristan Wharfs gets injured. Hopefully not, because he already got injured towards the end of the season last year. But yeah, Antoine Harrison... Going to the Tampa Bay Bucks tackle, it could really go anywhere for them. They need so many different things that any pick would not be a bad pick, whether that's Dalton Kincaid, Brian Branch. I mean, yeah, this is a, this is a new one because now the tight ends are falling in this one, but defensive line, guard, and center for the Seahawks here. They already got Jalen Carter, but I think they continue to add... I did like Lucas Van Ness going to them at the 20th spot before, and I'm going to like it today too. Very powerful, very powerful defensive end. Could be the best defensive end in the draft at some point. That's a tough competition with Will Anderson, though. That's a very tough competition with him. Tyree Wilson, I feel like he's a hit or miss. It's definitely that type of player for him, as much as he did great at Texas Tech. His size contributed to that a lot. I'm not convinced on Tyree Wilson, I won't lie, but Lucas Van Ness, I like going to Seattle, and that's who I have going to the Seahawks and the Chargers. Wide receiver, linebacker, cornerback. Now, they're heavily considering possibly Bijan. It could be Bijan. It definitely could be Bijan because of the whole Austin Eckler situation. Where do they have a second round pick? They do. I think they can wait on running back. I think they take their chances on Jameer Gibbs falling. And they're going to go ahead and go with Zay Flowers once again. It's just that it's so scary if they have a speedy threat like Zay Flowers, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams. I've gone into it before. I know. But that would just be such an entertaining offense, especially with Justin Herbert throwing that ball. Zay Flowers. Yeah, going to Los Angeles, to the Chargers, bit of a reach for them, but they'll deal with it. The Ravens needing cornerback, edge, or wide receiver. Miles Murphy is still here. I think they'd rather take Miles Murphy than probably reaching on Emmanuel Forbes, as much as he could fit in with them. Edge could... Oof. They did lose Calais Campbell, though. Yeah, Miles Murphy has already fallen this far. I think the Ravens are going to go ahead and go with that. Miles Murphy to Baltimore, filling in that edge position that they lost Calais Campbell for. They were not going to overpay him. And the Falcons are here, and they see Bijan is still here. Almost, almost went to Los Angeles, to the Chargers, but they're going to be able to get Bijan regardless. Bijan going to the Falcons. The Jaguars, a lot circulating with Brian Branch. Defensive back could be a thing. I think the Jaguars take Brian Branch. They need a ver they need a better safety. They just need good safeties in general. Brian Branch has the IQ. He definitely showed up for Alabama in a lot of points. Jordan Battle was supposed to be the one that really showed out for the safeties there. But Brian Branch just great, great vision, great decision making. I think that can help the Jaguars a lot as much as they probably wanted to get Miles Murphy to be on the opposite side of Trayvon Walker. Brian Branch is the best scenario for them right here. But the New York Giants probably wanted Brian Branch to fall to them. But now they have a choice between wide receivers here. Wide receiver, center, linebacker, safety. And I think they could take Quentin Johnston. He could be a top wide receiver. Or he could just very be the same thing that Kenny Galladay has been for them. And that's just a really big man that can maybe catch the ball sometimes. But he's probably going to be catching the ball a lot more than Kenny Galladay. Quentin Johnston going to the New York Giants. He has he has the speed. He has everything. He has everything to be successful. Just a dropping. It's just a dropping. And probably with the amount of times that he's going to be getting the ball, he could get past that. Now the Cowboys are here with no Bijan. And now it's probably the only man that they really wanted to get 
in the first round. As surprising as it may be, I think they're going to go with Michael Mayer. I think they're going to go with Michael Mayer. He's just the definition of consistency. They just lost Dalton Schultz. They could go cornerback. I think they can wait on it, though. Tight end isn't really something that they can wait on because they're in the late second round, and there's a lot of teams that need tight end in the second round. So, yeah, I'm going to have Michael Mayer going to the Dallas Cowboys. He's just very physical. He's a very physical tight end. He could block for you, but he can also do a Gronk type of blocking and then go to an option route. I think that'll be great for the Cowboys and Dak Prescott. They trust Tony Pollard for the season, even though he is on a franchise tag. Yeah, Michael Mayer going to Dallas. And this is where... I think that Emmanuel Forbes is going to be able to go to for Buffalo. They need a cornerback very desperately at the moment. They have Tredavious White, but that's really about it right now. As far as I know, I haven't seen too many convincing cornerbacks in that room. And yeah, Emmanuel Forbes, there's no defensive material linebackers for the Buffalo Bills to take at this position. And Emmanuel Forbes goes to Buffalo. And here the Bengals are. With Michael Mayer off the board, Jameer Gibbs could be a situation. I mean, Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon is very um, unpredictable in terms of his availability this year. But they need tight end. I think they can really use any running back and be good because of their receiving threats that they have. They could rely heavy on the pass game this year if Joe Mixon is not able to perform in terms of just dressing up for a game. Defensive interior, defensive back, yeah. Dalton Kincaid, I'm going to have Dalton Kincaid going to the Bengals, a very good vertical threat, just not good at blocking in terms of having the strength to, could improve on that, just depends on how the Bengals use him. The Saints, I've had him taking Will McDonald in the past, Osiris Torrance could also go there, they need a guard, yeah, he's a great run blocker, he's a very good run blocker, but they need a guard very badly. Osiris Torrance from Florida. Yeah, I like that pick for them. Will McDonald is a great pick too. I wouldn't be mad at either if I was the Saints. If I take Will McDonald and he's going to be a great edge because Cameron Jordan is only getting older. Osiris Torrance. I think you go offensive line. I think you go offensive line. You don't have a QB right now in terms of a good one. Probably prepare for that for the future. Osiris Torrance going to the Saints. Helping that offensive line, continuing with having a good offensive line for the future. The Eagles, wide receiver, guard, center, defensive interior, and safety. I don't know if they're the type of team that's going to go for Jameer Gibbs. I'm going to have Jameer Gibbs going to the first because the Eagles want to have a superstar running back. I think Jameer Gibbs can be that, especially with how much they like to pass the ball. Jameer Gibbs is a great receiving threat. He can also run the ball. He's been spoken very highly of of all, all of these teams. They almost think that he's better than Bijan, but I would find that hard to believe right now. Jameer Gibbs going to the Eagles. Both of the top running backs get taken in the first round, which might cause a lot of ruckus in the second. And here the Chiefs are with Jordan Addison just sitting here waiting. Jordan Addison going to the Chiefs. They, they need wide receivers. They just need wide receivers in general. And here the Steelers are. And Anton Harrison isn't even on the board anymore. DeWan Jones is really the only man left. Yeah, and they take the last good tackle for a couple rounds now. And they're probably going to be taking DeWan Jones. They need line. They already got Joey Porter in the first round. You keep adding to your needs. And DeWan Jones is a freak man in terms of how big he is out of ohio state it seems like ohio state just had a pair of massive massive tackles but he's going to be great for them i'm sure the colts were hoping that he dropped to them but that's not going to be happening here dewan jones going to the steelers and with the texans already taking their qb they got a qb they got their star defensive lineman they're now in a position of, do they get a wide receiver? The only wide receiver that could possibly go here is Josh Downs. Josh Downs is very small, but he has great footwork. I, I don't know if that's the man that they really want to go with. Center could be a position of need. 
or a position that they could get in general. I think they go position of need and center just might be something that they go after. I know this is a bit of an odd draft so far the situation that it's in right now i mean maybe tyree wilson should have gone earlier for sure yeah i think they go a position of need i don't think they're too concerned about trading back to get him at his value but john michael schmitz out of minnesota a great great center very savvy center at that yeah they got to fulfill that o-line now that they have a brand new qb and the Cardinals are here once again after picking Paris Johnson in the first. They could go cornerback in the second. I think that's what they ideally go for. Cam Smith is here. Good size. I think he's about 6'2". Has good ball skills. He's a slot corner, really. Edge could be a better situation for them since they haven't gotten that. Since they were really weren't able to, to be honest. I'm going to have Will McDonald going to the Cardinals. He's already fallen out of the first round, which is already surprising. I think he'll be great for the Cardinals. I think they get... The defensive lineman that they want. Will Anderson really, I mean, I really do think that he's going to go to the Texans no matter what. Unless magically Bryce Young falls to them, then maybe they take that. But I really doubt that he's going to go past the first pick. I'd, it, it would be a horrible business decision for Frank Wright to take CJ Stroud over Bryce Young. But Will McDonald, the fourth, going to the Arizona Cardinals, dropping out of the first already. Now the Colts are here with cornerback, offensive line, wide receiver, and QB. They got CJ Stroud in the first round. And at this position, with everything falling, as much as Cam Smith should probably be going to the Rams, the Colts could use him. The Colts could definitely use him, get some size there. Kenny Moore is really their CB1 right now since Stephon Gilmore got traded to the Cowboys because he's old. Yeah, as I said before, slot corner, great ball skills think he'll be going to the Colts if there's no offensive lineman on the board. And that's just how it's fallen right now. I mean, Steve Avila is here. I, I really think that he's the last good one here. Interior line, offensive tackle. Yeah, I, I, I don't think they're reaching that far. They're going to go ahead and go with Cam Smith from South Carolina going to Indianapolis. Now, the Rams needing just about everything that a team should need. Offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, defensive back, and running back. I think they go with Felix. Best player on the board as of right now. I think he'll be great. I mean, another man that could be great is BJ Ojolari or Adebawar. But I think they go with Felix. He definitely could have gone in the first round. He's already fallen to the Rams. So I think they take their chance on him. Possibly have Aaron Donald mentor him in some way since he was a former edge but was a bit undersized for it or he's undersized for the defense tackle position but played edge but to tomato tomato the seahawks got jalen carter got lucas van s in the first round i don't think they go with more of that right now i think they try to get their offensive lineman and that's going to be steve avila like i've said previously just needs to work on his run game blocking because he used to be a center a weird switch for the angles that he will be getting in that, but Steve Avila going to the Seahawks should be fine as he learns with Kenneth Walker in the backfield, my favorite running back in the league right now. The Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, got a cornerback in the first, and here's where I have Mozzie Smith going once again to the Las Vegas Raiders. ADP is 32.8, but we're at the 38th pick. And he does not fall much further. Grown man. Grown man strength right there. Out of Michigan. Not much to say about Mozzie. Just a big man that can really play alongside Max Crosby. Panthers now here. Trying to get that wide receiver. And it seems like he was able to fall regardless. They got Bryce Young. Now they're going to be getting Josh Downs as a speed threat down the field for him. They have Adam Thielen now. I mean, you don't have a lot of great options. But you want somebody to develop alongside Bryce Young. You'll worry about the defense later on in the draft, possibly. Josh Downs from North Carolina, great footwork, just very small. Saints, once again, defensive line. They got Osiris Torrance at guard in the first. Brian Brisset is still here. You know, I think it's viable that Brian Brisset could fall out of the first. Possibly not past Mozzie. 
maybe I should have taken Brisse for the Raiders, but I just think Mozzie is a lot bigger in terms of what the Raiders want. But I don't think he falls past the Saints. Brian Brisse going to the New Orleans Saints. You could you could flip flop him. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about the fact that he's fallen this far in this mock draft. I could be possible. Could very well be possible. At the 41th pick, though, with the Titans, there's no offensive line necessarily for them to get. I could see this as a position for the Dolphins to trade up since they see that the Lions, the Packers, all those teams that need a tight end are about to come up on the board. Again, I have the Dolphins taking Darnell Washington regardless, but that's only if he falls to that position. Yeah, I think the Dolphins make this trade possibly 197 as well and a fifth round pick next year 51 197 for the 41st pick in the draft for the dolphins and that could include a player it could but the dolphins are able to move up and get the tight end that they want on the team the 49ers scheme that they're really running right now if we're being honest with mike mcdaniel at head coach a great scheme he has a little bit of his own flair into it but darnell washington can really move a man he can really move a man in terms of blocking, run blocking. He needs to work on his route running. He is just a mismatch type of tight end. He can't really convince somebody that he's going to go one way and then go the complete opposite. So Darnell Washington could very well become very good for the Dolphins and the league. So Darnell Washington will be going to Miami from Georgia. And the Packers now on the clock seeing that darnell washington is off the board i really think that they'll probably go with tight ends like luke musgrave maybe they wait for their second pick to do that since defensive line is still a need for them you know i think they're confident that there's still going to be an edge that they want on the board either at or bj ojalari still there at 45 even though the falcons are sitting there waiting for one of those to fall I'm going to go ahead and go with Luke Musgrave for the Packers. They weren't able to get Michael Mayer or Dalton Kincaid in the first round, but they got somebody that, and Tyree Wilson, that could be very well for their defense. But Luke Musgrave going to the Packers, a good good receiving threat for them, good vertical threat, just also needs to work on his route running. There's a lot of question marks in this draft. It's just a very unpredictable one. And Jack Campbell is another man that I just really feel like the Jets are going to be taking, no matter what. I don't think any other team is going to want to take Jack Campbell. Maybe, maybe the Rams. I wouldn't be too convinced, but he is the definition of a middle linebacker. And the Jets do need that Mike linebacker right there. Going to the New York Jets after the trade that the New York Jets had to get Aaron Rodgers. And then the Falcons are here on the board. I think they go defense since they're able to get Bijan in the first uh, possible superstar for their team. Adebor seems to be getting a lot more recognition than BJ Ojolari. So I'll keep that consistent here and go with Adebor going to the Falcons. Could very well be very good for their team. Adebor will be going to Atlanta. Could have gone in the first, but he falls to Atlanta. And then here is where BJ Ojolari goes to the Green Bay Packers. Very well could be good for the Packers since he already is known to have talent from LSU. Going up to Green Bay, B.J. Ojolari filling out that defensive line. They lost to Darius Smith last season or the season before. The Patriots got a tackle in the first with Broderick Jones. I would imagine they probably go with either edge or cornerback here. Going with Tyreek Stevenson. Balance is incredible. Outside corner. Bill Belichick could very well turn him into one of the best cornerbacks in the league. And he will be going to New England out of UM. And Drew Sanders is still on the board. They were able to get a cornerback in the first round in Deontay Banks to continue to add to their defense now that they declined Chase Young's fifth-year option, surprisingly so, because they spent top pick on him. But Drew Sanders going to the Washington Commanders, a blitz-heavy linebacker, could very well fit into that scheme. And yeah. Out of Arkansas, Drew Sanders going to the Commanders, filling out that defense even more than it already is. And the Lions really probably could be desperate for tight end. They already took their defensive interior and cornerback in the first. There's not a wide receiver that you would really want to get that will really make a difference on this team. 
They could go Jalen Hyatt. I think I had him going with Jalen Hyatt in the last one. But Sam Laporta is here. Actually, I think Jalen Hyatt was later. Yeah, at the 55 probably. I think they go Sam Laporta. Comes from a school that had George Kittle, TJ Hawkinson. Could very well be one of those types of linebacker or tight ends. Sam Laporta going to the Lions. I mean, they just replaced TJ Hawkinson with probably somebody else that played just like him at Iowa. Linebacker would be ideal for them, but I do not think that there's a lot of linebackers right now. They Ian Henley out of Washington State. Great pass rusher. Very twitchy. Going to the Steelers. They're going to continue going with defense for right now, but I think that's what they need, to be honest with you. They have George Pickens at wide receiver. They have a running back. They have a QB. They added to their offense already with the offensive tackle in Dewan Jones up here. They're drafting very well right now. Dayon Henley. The Bucks now don't have a choice with uh with tight end. And they're in a rough position because Hennon Hooker could very well go to the Bucks like I had him or as I've spoken about before. They don't have a safety. There is Antonio Johnson. But you have Hendon Hooker on the board. Hendon Hooker could very well be a first-round pick. If they're able to get him at 50, I think that'll be great. I think that'll be fantastic. Antonio Johnson just might keep falling. Yeah. Hendon Hooker, I'm not convinced on Baker Mayfield still. And he goes to the Bucks. Titans, wide receiver, O-line. They got Jackson Smith and Jigba. Again, Cody Mouch going to the Titans. They just got they just released Taylor Lewin and they build for the future. A great run blocker out of North Dakota State. Just needs to work work on pass protection, but Ryan Tannehill is used to getting hit. Cody Mouch going to the Tennessee Titans. And the Seahawks are on the board once again. And they have already drafted. They have already drafted Lucas Vaness and Jalen Carter. And Steve Avila. So we really got most of the players that they needed. They could very well go with the center. Since John Michael Schmitz has already went off the board to the Texans. They could get a little scared in terms of if these centers are still going to be here at their next pick. And I don't think they pick for another good minute. Yeah, they don't pick until late third round. Joe Tipman is a fast, fast center out of Wisconsin. Can get to that second level very easily. Going to the Seattle Seahawks. And here we are with the Bears. They've already gotten Peter Skaronsky. Cornerback is a position that they should probably go after. DJ Turner is up here on the board. They could go center. But I think they value cornerback a bit more out of Michigan. Great athleticism. A man corner. Yeah, DJ Turner going to the Bears because after him, it's pretty much a significant fall off i mean you could go julius brents just because of his insane insane size but i think they let somebody else take a risk on that dj turner going to the bears and this very well might be the team that takes a risk on that because julius brents he he just has some crazy size i think the chargers already picked in this round too i don't think you get much better of an athlete in terms of physicals compared to julius brents keely ringo was a top prospect for a while but kind of fell off because he gave up a lot he gave up a lot of yards clark phillips a bit undersized the chargers could just keep going with these young cornerbacks they have jc jackson but he's just not he's not staying healthy for them and Julius Brents is going to go to Los Angeles. And the Detroit Lions. Trade that they had with Minnesota got them the, this pick. Wide receiver, tight end, defensive interior. They already got Sam Laporta. They've already gotten Kalaja Kansi. And they've gotten Christian Gonzalez. Or no, Devin Witherspoon. My fault. Wide receiver could very well be it. Nathaniel Dell has fallen all the way to this position as well. Yeah, I'm going to have Nathaniel Dell going there. He's just very fast. Jamison Williams is suspended for six games. They could have some speedy wide receivers as Amon or St. Brown is a clear wide receiver one. Hopefully they do pay him when it's time for him to get paid. Out of Houston, Nathaniel Dell going to find that spot. And the Jaguars, after getting Brian Branch in the first round, are here. Looking for an edge, most likely, and Thule is just sitting here for the taking. I think they go Thule. I think they go Thule. They want to keep solidifying solidifying that defensive line. 
and Thule can do just that from USC. Three technique, very good at defeating blocks. Out of USC, Thule T2, I'm going to try to say it, Thule Tiapolotu, Thule Tiapolotu, or Tuapolotu. Going to the Jaguars. The New York Giants, <laughs> this is where I have Antonio Johnson going. They already missed out on Brian Branch in the first round. Antonio Johnson, great arm length, amazing arm length. He just needs to play on the ball. I think he goes to the Giants. I think they can develop him very well. Antonio Johnson filling in that safety spot for them. The Cowboys here, they already took Michael Mayer in the first Running back isn't really a position that they probably should go with. I mean, Zach Charbonnet would not be a bad pick for them. You know, matter of fact, I'm going to have him taking a defensive interior position in Keanu Benton out of Wisconsin. Very versatile defensive tackle. I think that's what they need when you're playing alongside Michael Parsons. I think they just need defensive tackles in general. Linebacker isn't really something that you can look for right now. Yeah, Trenton Simpson is the next best one. Keanu Benton going to the Dallas Cowboys as much as the Buffalo Bills probably wanted him to fall to them. That's not going to be happening today. They have James Cook, so I don't imagine that they'll go with the running back as Zach Jarbonet has already fallen here. Linebacker Trenton Simpson. I'm going to have them taking Trenton Simpson again. A tremendous athlete. He's a tremendous athlete. They could get great value for him. I think he'll be great for the Bills. I still think that he'll be great for the Bills. Trenton Simpson going to Buffalo out of Clemson. Bengals. They see Zach Charbonnet. They see the running back room right now. I find it very hard to believe that they take a cornerback or anything else over Zach Charbonnet. They were able to get Dalton Kincaid at the end of the first, filling in that tight end position. I think they go offense once again. Zach Charbonnet, bell cow running back, very creative, just needs to work on his receiving, but I think they can help him out with that. Zach Charbonnet from UCLA going to the Bengals, an ideal situation for him, can win a lot on that team. Chicago Bears once again here at the 61 overall pick. This is actually where I'm going to have Keon White going for the Bears as much as Isaiah Foskey looks great. As much as they probably need a center, they could get a center later on. There's not bad options. I mean, Luke Weipler is your most ideal one. I think they live with the center that they have. I think they do. They got Peter Skaronsky. They need defense. They got DJ Turner, but they need some defensive line too. So Keon White, size, speed, everything that you want out of an edge rusher. Yeah out of Georgia Tech, going to the Chicago Bears, and then this is probably where Luke Weipler is going to fall at. Probably should have gone earlier. It was a tough decision between Keon White and Luke Weipler, but Luke Weipler doesn't fall much farther than the Eagles since they do need a backup for Jason Kelsey possibly retiring after this season. He came back for this season, trying to make another push for the Super Bowl. Could very well happen with a weak NFC but Luke Weipler goes to the Eagles, learns a lot from Jason Kelsey this year. And once again, I'm going to have Isaiah Foskey going to the Chiefs. I really just like the situation for him. 4-3 defensive end out of Notre Dame going to the Kansas City Chiefs. They might be heartbroken that they missed out on a center. But center isn't necessarily something that you're too worried about compared to other positions. I mean, as much as it would be great to have one, and as much as there's not a lot in this draft in terms of centers, you have other positions of need that are much more needed. And another one of those is going to be possibly some more defensive line, if we're being honest. Or they could very well keep adding to the cornerback room. They do have Jalen Johnson on the team. Yeah, I think they keep trying to add to the cornerback room. Jalen Johnson is really the only player that they have, if we're being honest. I mean, Keely Ringo could very well be very good. He could. He could get a lot of interceptions. Probably just needs to work on not giving up so many yards. But I don't think they go with defensive line. I think they're pretty confident with what they've already gotten in terms of defensive line. They need to add to that cornerback room. Keely Ringo does not fall much further than the first pick in the third. And here are the Texans. Once again, they have gotten Will Anderson, Will Levis, 
Wow, two woes. And uh, center in John Michael Schmitz. I think they're feeling pretty confident right now. Now they need a wide receiver, though. They need a wide receiver to go with Will Levis. I think Jalen Hyatt could be that wide receiver. He's already fallen this fall far. Wow. And yeah, Jalen Hyatt probably could have gone earlier. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think this is where he needs to go. Jalen Hyatt in the third round from Tennessee. An insane, insane speedy threat. Yeah, out of Tennessee, I've already said that he needs to work on defeating press coverage, but that's nor here or there. Guard, center, defensive line, cornerback. They got a cornerback in this past round, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, they got Will McDonald. That's what they got. They got Paris Johnson in the first as well, so cornerback could be the position that they go with i don't know if they go with an undersized cornerback though like clark phillips honestly i i think they go with darius rush it's difficult it's definitely difficult i know clark phillips is probably the better cornerback but small cornerbacks are very very hard to bet on i'll say that the cardinals will probably give clark phillips a chance he's already gotten here probably should have gotten taken by the bears but Keely Ringo, probably just a bigger name in that, but no, more known in terms of for the Chicago Bears. I just really don't think that they'll like Clark Phillips as much as they do Keely because Keely's 6'2". Keely is 6'2", and Clark Phillips is 5'9". Yeah, Clark Phillips a third, going to the Cardinals. And now the Broncos are here. They need a center, but I think they go cornerback. I do think they go cornerback, and this is where I have Darius Rush going. Some great size on him. Some great size on him. Hodgins Tomlinson doesn't seem like the ideal pick for the Broncos. They like their big cornerbacks. Like uh, PS2 is his nickname. But Sertain or Sertan the second is their CB1 right now. I think Darius Rush could compliment him tremendously. Out of South Carolina. Going to the Broncos. Darius Rush. They have back-to-back picks because they don't have their first-round pick since the Russell Wilson trade, and they didn't get a second-round pick either. I don't know if they go center. I don't know if they go center here. I mean, they don't have another pick in third round. Center is a difficult position here because there's not a lot. I mean, Chandler Zavilla, I don't think he can really move to the center position. I mean, you can really move any guard to the center position, to be honest. I think they go double cornerbacks. I think they do go double cornerbacks. They give Trevius Hodgins Tomlinson a chance, even though he is a bit undersized. Built like a linebacker who who got kicked out to cornerback. He beats up opposing receivers in press coverage, allowing only one catch on 88 press snaps this past season. Did not know that much about Corey Trice. It's a very Broncos pick, but Corey Trice, probably a reach out of Purdue, but seems like he is a strong man at cornerback. You continue to add to a tall, tall cornerback room. Makes it very difficult for opposing teams to be able to pass it all on you. Corey Trice and Darius Rush going to the Denver Broncos. Back-to-back cornerbacks. I really don't think that they go with center unless a Luke Weipler falls to them. Of course, but I don't think he would fall much further than the Bears again if, he, if they had another chance to get him. Now the Rams are on the clock. At pick 69, uh, Matthew Bergeron could be the pick for them. Offensive line in general is what they need. As much as Devin Akin could be something good for them, they still have Cam Akers on the team. Great pass blocker. I think they go with that for sure. To the Los Angeles Rams, Las Vegas. They've gotten their QB. Did they get their QB? I don't think they did, actually. I don't think I got a QB for them. No, Mozzie Smith and Christian Gonzalez was the first pick. And this is where I have him taking a QB. This is where I have him taking a QB. To back up Jimmy Garoppolo, it's not a bad reach. I mean, I don't think they have another pick in the third round, and I don't think he falls out of the third round. Tanner McKee, great pocket passer. He's a great pocket passer, but once he's under pressure, it gets a little rough. He can't move. He can't move at all. Yeah, but he has great timing. And I think he could develop behind Jimmy Garoppolo. Kind of a similar situation. And he goes to the Las Vegas Raiders. Tanner McKee from Stanford. They get their QB possible of the future in the third round. If he ends up doing any sort of better in the pocket presence. They're going to go with cornerback here. 
Garrett Williams. Yeah, Garrett Williams, a great outside corner. They need a cornerback. They could use defensive line, too. I looked at Nick Hedgebrig, I think it's how you say his name. Herbig. Nick Herbig. Maybe they waited out on cornerback. Derek Hall out of Auburn. His quickness is great. He's definitely an edge. Yeah, they already missed out on Will McDonald in the first round and second round. I think they take Derek Hall here. Texans on the board. Wide receiver O-line. They've gotten Jackson Smith and Jigba. And... Cody Mouch. So they got some O-line already. Could very well go with wide receiver again. Could very well go with halfback. It's also a position that they could go with. think... They might actually want to go with a defensive lineman or halfback because Derrick Henry might not be on the team next year. I think they go with Devin Aiken. I do think they go with Devin Aiken just because Derrick Henry is not uh, for sure for next season. And with the way that I think they're going to go about it, I don't think that he's going to be there. In the situation, this is in the situation of Derrick Henry is not on the Titans, they go with Devin Aiken. Without a doubt, if not... Could possibly go with an edge like Nick Herbig to be on the other side of Jeffrey Simmons. Has the home run speed. Could get out there. Out of Texas A&M. Going to Tennessee. And here are the Eagles needing wide receiver, guard, center, defensive interior, and safety. They got a safety last round. Did they? No. The Eagles have gotten Nolan Smith, Jameer Gibbs, and Luke Weipler. And now, with all that, there's still a very good wide receiver on the board in Cedric Tillman. Yeah, another wide receiver that needs to work on press coverage, but his catch radius, radius is pretty good. It's pretty good. Playing alongside A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith could be ideal for him. Cedric Tillman going to Philadelphia. The Browns on the board. Wow. I haven't said that the whole entire drive. Siaki Ika. At defensive interior, nose tackle, something that the Browns need right now. Could very well see it happen. Has a lot of lower body strength. Great pass rusher. I think he'll be great for the Cleveland Browns at that defensive interior position. I don't think that there's a lot of safeties that they could really get right now. I mean, Jordan Battle, is, Jordan Battle and Sidney Brown are some great options, but they like their defensive line players. Miles Garrett is still there on the team. And here's the Falcons. Nick Herbig is still on the board. Yeah, I do think they go with wide receiver, though. Rasheed Rice is here from SMU. Possession catching is his forte. Yeah, I like him. I like Rasheed Rice for the Falcons. Playing alongside Drake London. Third round receiver for them. The New England Patriots. Once again, QB might be something that they look at, but Tanner McKee is no longer on the board. Edge, Nick Herbig is still here. They've gotten an offensive tackle. They've gotten, what was the other one, Tyreek Stevenson. I think this is where they finally take Edge with Nick, Nick Herbig still on the board. You can't really let him drop much further because Edge falls significantly after this position. Nick Herbig going to the New England Patriots. I think he can be great for them. Now, the Rams already missed out on a cornerback in the first round in Cam Smith and couldn't really go with one at that position. But Trevius Hodges Tomlinson is still here. I could see them going with it. Garrett Williams is still here too. I just think size is valued a little more now. Especially now that they got rid of Jalen Ramsey. They have to fill that in. Garrett Williams, a great outside corner. As I think I said already, out of Syracuse. It was between him and Jartavius Martin. But I like Garrett Williams on the Los Angeles Rams. Trevius Hodgins just really might see a fall like he is right now. It's just an unfortunate situation, but that's just how it's falling right now. Luke Musgrave was drafted by the Packers already, I think. Yeah, Luke Musgrave, BJ Ojolari, and Tyree Wilson have all been drafted by the Packers. In the possible situation that Tyree Wilson falls out the top five, maybe not. Maybe I'm tripping. Ah, I'm just not super convinced on Tyree. Maybe you guys can let me know down in the comments why he's so sought after aside from his size and his length and all that stuff. Like, I haven't seen much of him, like, actually using his skills in some way. 
compared to the other edge rushers in this draft that has me super convinced that he's going to be good but and I think they really tried to fill out their defense as much as possible in this one they could go Marvin Mims safety just seems like something they should really go for I, I think they go with that as much as Marvin Mims and um, Michael Wilson and Jonathan Mingo are here I also saw a mock draft that Michael Wilson was going in the first of the Bucks. That is absolutely atrocious. I understand that you're trying to get some reaction out of it, but that's just stupid. Don't be an idiot. Sidney Brown going to the Packers from Illinois. The Indianapolis Colts now on the board. I think I drafted a cornerback for them in the last round. Cam Smith was the one that I drafted for them, and they got CJ Stroud in the first. This very well could be where... A wide receiver goes i mean they could go blake freeland he's a great tackle from byu i think they actually go with tyler steen blake freeland has some play strength concerns and i think they go with tyler steen from alabama alabama seems to always have some good tackles and i think they trust that they need offensive line quentin nelson is literally the only man on that line doing something and the steelers are back on the board tackle is something they've already taken i think they already got linebacker as well yeah day henley and they got uh, Deontay Banks in the first. Whoa, not Deontay Banks. They got Joey Porter in the first. I think they take a chance on a cornerback in Trevius Hodgins Tomlinson. I think he's fallen this far already. Cornerbacks tend to be taken ahead of their ADP regardless. So, yeah, Trevius Hodges, they take a chance on him. They've had some short cornerbacks in the past. Got Sam Laporta, got Kalijah Kansi, also got Devin Witherspoon. Now, wide receiver could be what they go for i think they also got nathaniel dell yeah they did get nathaniel dell they could continue to add to their defensive line right now six two out of stanford i think he can do well i think he can do well with the lions i mean it's a bit of an opposite than what they just got last round with nathaniel dell they take a chance on somebody that's a bit bigger more physical we're gonna go with michael wilson to the lions and then here we have the Bucks, and I think they finally take their safety in Jordan Battle. I think he can be very reliable for them. I think they need somebody next to Antoine Winfield. Jordan Battle can be just that. As they plan to hopefully re-sign Antoine Winfield with Devin White leaving now. Seems, since he requested or demanded a trade. Seahawks. So really, this is just a position that they just really could take best player available. And Tucker Craft is here, and he's falling. He is falling a lot right now in terms of where he's supposed to be going at. But I actually think they might go linebacker. I think they might go linebacker because they have some older linebackers right now. They might need to prepare for the future. And the best case scenario for them right now is taking DeMarvion over Sean. It's difficult. It's difficult. They could wait on a middle linebacker. I mean, Henry Tuotu is a tremendous one. I might just go value for them right now. They need defensive line. Kobe Turner could help them a lot out of wake forest get much of a better option than him you could run a 4-3 i think that's what they run no they run a 3-4 but kobe turner could fill in for jalen carter when he needs a break i'm gonna have him going to the seahawks here they got their center they got their guard i really don't think that they waste time they could have gone tucker crafts they have noah fant though yeah now now the Dolphins are on the clock and they need offensive line desperately. Now, do they go tackle or do they go interior line? Yeah, they're going to go tackle. They're going to go tackle. I don't think they want Austin Jackson starting at right tackle on the opposite side of Teron Armstead. Blake Freeland, Wanye Morris. No, nah, I think they go Blake Freeland here. As much as he has play strength issues, I, I don't think they pass on him. I don't think they pass on him and take Juan A. Morris over him. I'm going to have Blake Freeland going to the Dolphins. Fills out that O-line. They have Connor Williams, Robert Hunt, Liam Eichenberg, Teron Armstead, and now Blake Freeland. That's going to be a great O-line for Tua so he doesn't get concussed again. Can't stand Tua getting concussed. Wide receiver, linebacker, cornerback. They've already gotten Julius Brents, a massive, massive cornerback. They got Zay Flowers and Julius Brent so far linebacker this is where Overshawn's gonna go this is where Overshawn's gonna go Demarion Overshawn wide linebacker pretty ideal for them I mean they could possibly develop him into being a middle linebacker but I don't think he's gonna be able to do that out of Texas Longhorns 
Hook'em Horns and the Ravens are on the board. I'm going to have the Ravens taking a cornerback. Jartavius Martin, decent size out of Illinois. It's just a significant drop off after that. I don't know if you want to risk not having a good young quarterback on your defense as much as you want to risk having a mediocre receiving core. They already have a mediocre one, so they have Rashad Bateman, though, and Devin Duvernay, who I like a lot. Jartavius Martin out of Illinois is going to go to the Ravens. And the Vikings on the clock once again after not having a second-round pick, I don't think. They got Anthony Richardson in the first round, so they might want to go with a defensive lineman here. I'm going to be taking Gervin Dexter Sr. for the Vikings. Very explosive for being 310 pounds. I think you like it as a Vikings player or a Vikings fan. Yeah, Gervin Dexton Sr. going to Minnesota. Basically replacing what could have been Brian Brisset being there, but you wanted to take a QB instead. Jaguars. Brian Branch. I think previously gotten Tully in the second round. Now... They probably want to get a guard. And here's Chandler Zavala from North Carolina State. Very good pass blocker, and that's exactly what they usually do. I think Travis Etienne can create for himself, whether he's not that great of a run blocker, but he seems pretty decent at it. For the Jaguars, filling in that guard position, Brandon Sheriff is only going to be good for so long. Chandler Zavala going to the Jaguars, and the New York Giants are on the clock. We have about... How many picks left? Maybe like 13 picks. Giants still have not gone cornerback in this draft just yet. They got a wide receiver. But cornerback isn't really something that you can find right now at the 89th spot. You might want to go a different route. They got Antonio Johnson. Yeah, I guess you reach regardless. You already got Quentin Johnson in the first. Jalen Jones, a cover three corner. Best ranked player on the board. I think they go with Jalen Jones. They need to get some cornerbacks in there. And now the Dallas Cowboys still, I think, didn't they get Devin Aiken in the last round? They got Keanu Benton. They haven't gotten a running back yet. I don't think I'll be doing that, though. Mm, nope, they got Michael Marin first. They could have possibly waited on Michael Marin, to be honest with you. Mm, Tajay Spears is a pretty good running back. I've heard a lot of good things about Tajay Spears. Tank Bigsby is also really good. I think they take Tajay Spears, though. I don't think there's a lot of defensive interior that you really want to take over that. Yeah, no, they're going to go running back here. Tajay Spears, I would take him over Tank Bigsby. Out of Tulane. Had a lot of big plays for Tulane. Now the Bills are on the board. I think they try to find a wide receiver. Jonathan Mingo could be the best case scenario for them. Yeah, they got their defensive back. They got their linebacker. I think they take Jonathan Mingo here. Trying to add to that wide receiver room that still is weak. Unless they trade for DeAndre Hopkins, which I'm assuming would probably be a third round pick because of his how old he is. Then it will be Jonathan Mingo because they just need to find something for wide receiver right now. The Cincinnati Bengals. They got... Zach Charbonnet in the second. They just might look for defensive interior or defensive back in this position here. Yeah, and I think this is as far as Zach Pickens is going to drop. Zach Pickens going to the Cincinnati Bengals. Like that a little bit better than Morrow for some reason. I don't know why. Zach Pickens out of South Carolina. Carolina Panthers now. They got their wide receiver. They got their QB of the future. Don't quite think that they got an edge if I'm not mistaken. Surprised they have these picks since they traded for the first overall pick. I mean, they did send DJ Moore. Carl Brooks probably shouldn't have fallen, fallen out of the second, according to a lot of people, but he's pretty good. He's quick. Three technique type of edge. I think it can be great for the Panthers here, playing alongside Brian Burns. Carl Brooks out of Bowling Green. And the Eagles have yet to be able to get a safety. I think they take a safety regardless here. Jamie Robinson out of Florida State. A too high safety. Has a lot of agility. Needs some more muscle mass. But I think he'll be great for the Eagles if put in the right scenario. 
Yeah, Jamie Robinson going to the Eagles. The Chiefs are now on the board needing wide receiver and defensive line. They could continue to try to build for the future. I think I already got Isaiah Foskey for them. Jordan Addison was the first. Byron Young has been connected to the Kansas City Chiefs a lot out of Tennessee. I could see it. I could definitely see it. I mean, we can look at the defensive interior. Yeah, I just think Byron Young is going to be a lot better. There's two Byron Youngs, too. Byron Young out of Tennessee going to the Kansas City Chiefs. Building for the future for the defense. I mean, it's a questionable decision, but we're just going to keep it pushing with the Cardinals on the clock. Why is there a bunch of C's? I think they take Isaiah McGuire. I think they still haven't gotten an edge. Wait, I think we got them Will McDonald. It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt to get another one because I don't think they have much edges right now. I don't think so. Because Chandler Jones isn't on the team anymore. J.J. Watt is retired. Yeah, Isaiah McGuire out of Missouri. A good pass rusher. Yeah, I, I don't think it hurts. They already got a cornerback, too. They got their tackle. I think they're comfortable with this. Isaiah McGuire. The Commanders. They need offensive tackle, and Wanya Morris is still here. Should have probably gone around the same area as Blake Freeland if we're talking about real life, but... He's dropped to the Commanders, and that is where he is going to be going out of the University of Oklahoma. The Browns previously taking a defensive player. I think it was a defensive interior player. Safety isn't really a position that they can go with here. It just doesn't seem like it's worth it. I mean, Antonio Johnson Jr. is pretty good out of Iowa State. Yeah, I'm going to have him taking Anthony Johnson Jr. I mean, he was a first-year safety, but he looked pretty good. Could be a long-term starter for the Cleveland Browns. And now we have a beret of 49ers picks. They might just take tackle here to start off. Jalen Duncan's pretty good. So is Nick Salvaretto or Saldaveri. I think you take Jalen Duncan. A massive man, 6'6", out of Maryland. You start off with a tackle just because you need it right now. And the Raiders are here in between all of the Raiders picks that they have. The Raiders have gotten Tanner McKee. They got their quarterback. They also got Mozzie Smith and Christian Gonzalez. So cornerback isn't really a position that they need. They got Mozzie they got Tanner McKee. Maybe O-line is what they go with. Interior, Andrew Voorhees is pretty good. Andrew Voorhees is pretty good, I mean, but you have better options at offense tackle. Nick Saldaveri just might be what they go with. They continue to struggle drafting tackles and O-line, but they take another shot in the third round. 49ers, though, cornerback is possibly something that they prioritize here. Riley Moss out of Iowa. Good size, good coverage. Yeah, Riley Moss going to the 49ers. And they have Christian McCaffrey. I don't think they go with halfback. I'm just trying to see if any of these are really enticing for them. I really do just think they go full cornerbacks here. They keep losing cornerbacks. Eli Ricks is a great one. 6'2 press cornerback. Could help him on defense a lot. Make some big plays. Cameron Mitchell just might be better. Just not as big as Eli Ricks. Just not as big as Eli Ricks out of Alabama. Going to the 49ers, and that is going to do it for this draft. Three-round mock drafts. I think I went pretty good in terms of time-wise and pretty well overall. Maybe Brian Brisset shouldn't have fallen out the first, but that's kind of just how my thought process was going. I wasn't even really thinking of Brian Brisset as much as I probably should have. I think it's a great first round. I mean, we made the trade for the Vikings to get Anthony Richardson as they saw him drop past Devin or the Lions and the Raiders. Will Levis going to the Texans. Not a lot of Texans fans really want Will Levis, but you got Will Anderson with the first pick that you have. Good pick. Good picks. I like Darnell Washington going to the Dolphins still. I really do think that's a guarantee. Hopefully, they make it happen. It's the most ideal tight end for them. But if you did enjoy that, please go down there and like and subscribe. Let me know 
what your thoughts are on your team's picks, on the picks overall. More than happy to talk to y'all down below. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be dropping probably a four-round mock draft tomorrow for day two of the draft, and it's going to get a little a little mixed up because now we're going to have the first round tonight. I might just go with what the first round is tonight and go through the rest after that. That would actually work. That would actually work because we'll do the whole first round as it was in real life. And then the second round, we would have to draft off of what they did in the first and go about it like that. But yeah, once again, if you did enjoy, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.